Hello, Internet. My name is Daniel O'Brien, and welcome to another thoughtful and respectful episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, the only show on the Internet that Kevin Smith calls. Kevin Smith respectfully declines your invitation to have him appear on your website. Exciting stuff. Today's episode explores... The Ewoks are a small mammalian race of adorable teddy bear creatures in the Star Wars universe who live on a forest moon of Endor. Depending on how old you were when you first saw Return of the Jedi, you either have a nostalgia-fueled, knee-jerk affection for them, or they're the stupid cartoony bullshit that ruined your cool adult space movie. And today we're going to talk about how they're terrifying. Because of their tiny mouths? Is it because of their tiny mouths and their, uh, like the, like the nothing, the dead shark eyes? Is that it? Is that why? Okay, I guess we'll find out. It's really easy to dismiss the Ewoks as a bunch of cute savages that are kind of dumb. Their clothes, weapons, and dwellings are all incredibly primitive, they speak a nonsense language, and they're just so damn huggable. It wouldn't be unreasonable for you to assume that all of their battle victories were happy accidents. Except it would be unreasonable. Don't forget that the Ewoks managed to capture Han Solo, a famously difficult to capture scoundrel, and Luke, a Jedi f***ing master. It took six bounty hunters and the focus of the entire Galactic Empire to catch Han the first time around, and the Ewoks got the jump on him with a bunch of sharp sticks. And Luke is literally magic. But. It could be argued that Luke allowed the capture to take place, knowing that he would eventually Jedi mind trick them into obedience. Except this isn't an isolated incident, because the Ewoks show off their competence all over the damn place. Look at this scene. Look! Over there! Stop him! That Ewok doesn't make a wrong move on that speeder bike. He got on the thing, spent a fraction of a second studying it, and then immediately knew the right sequence of buttons and levers to press to get that thing flying, and he promptly then used it to murder stormtroopers. <laughs> He's not poking buttons wildly. He got one look at the thing and instantly was like, beat up, goes, goes, and figured it out, because Ewoks are either magic or tech geniuses. Also, they took down the Galactic Empire's forces. This is the most powerful entity in the galaxy with seemingly unlimited resources, and they have a station on Endor's forest moon to protect their most important device, the Death Star, and they got full-blown wrecked by the Ewoks. That's like the American army losing a battle to chipmunks. The Ewoks beat the Empire because they're clever and strong, and they don't give a fuck. I bring this up because I don't want anyone to think the Ewoks are clumsy and lucky. They have an innate ability to understand complex technology, which literally no species has. Possessing an ability to immediately understand foreign technology is an insane evolutionary advantage. Intelligence and ruthlessness might be the most terrifying combination, and the Ewoks have it. Look at this asshole. Look at this asshole's head. What's that thing? I'll tell you. It's the face of some animal that is objectively more terrifying than the Ewoks on a superficial level. And this Ewok killed it and made it a hat. Made a hat out of its f***ing head. He is showing us that he, a cute thing, is more terrifying than a legitimately terrifying looking thing. And before you in the comments tell me that the animal to whom that head belongs is called a boar wolf, don't, because I already know it is. I just didn't mention it because it isn't relevant to what I'm talking about right now. Pointing out what it's called doesn't get you anything. You're not contributing when you do this. And don't for a second assume that I didn't know it. Don't ever try to out Star Wars me. I f***ing woke up earlier than you did. Anyway, ruthlessness. Yeah, the Ewoks are tough and scary, and that's not just based on their tendency to wear hats made out of previous enemy faces. They're not just scrappy underdogs. They're not just primitively defending themselves against the Empire with simple spears and arrows. Here is what Wikipedia, a thoroughly researched Star Wars database, says about the Ewoks' tools. Their arrows were tipped with a potent neurotoxin, ensuring that anyone who was shot by them would die in an extremely gruesome manner. Even seeming minor wounds would result in the victim clawing off any headgear, if they're wearing any, and gasping for air, the neurotoxin paralyzing every single muscle in the victim's body, including their lungs. This isn't a peaceful teddy bear planet that borrowed a chapter out of the Home Alone book on defense strategy with a bunch of cute traps. These are brutal monsters who want to cause cruel and unusual pain. Is that a they shoot horses reference? Deep cut. Anyway, the Ewoks eat people. We know that when they capture Luke and Han, they tie them up to a spit and bring them to what would be a big fire for what would be a big feast. Those cute little teddy bears were going to eat the shit out of our heroes, which I mean, I have a lot of complicated feelings about that because the Ewoks are clearly omnivores, but look at their teeth. They have no clear developed incisors, so evolutionarily speaking, they aren't designed for tearing and eating meat. Their teeth aren't sharp enough, which to me means they aren't supposed to eat meat, but they still clearly do. So like, what's that about? Is that for the thrill? No one clicked on this video for a long aside about teeth evolution, so whatever. But I mean, remember it. But in the meantime, hey, do not ever forget this. Aww. The Ewoks are celebrating their victory by playing music using the now empty helmets of dead soldiers. We already know that the Ewoks eat human meat, and we know that they killed a bunch of stormtroopers and Imperial Guards, and we see them drumming on these helmets, so you do the math, or don't, because I did. The Ewoks ate the brains of the stormtroopers that they brutally murdered, and now they're playing folk songs on their helmets. Oh, well, what do you think happened? You think they killed the stormtroopers, then gave them a, a proper burial before using their empty helmets to respectfully pay tribute to the loss? Wake up! They ate those brains and faces. Look at them bludgeoning these stormtroopers. Also at that party, I love that Luke and Leia and Han are playing along, but I bet as soon as they got back on the ship home, they're probably like, that was 
f***ed up, right? They made me eat Stormtrooper. I was worried it'd be insulting if I didn't have some, so, but gross, right? Oh yeah, the, uh, the dress. The Ewoks put Leia in that dress that she's wearing. This is probably a small thing. Wicked the Ewok befriends Leia, which is why he doesn't eat her immediately. And when we see her in their tree city, she's wearing a nice dress. A nice, human-sized dress. Leia didn't bring that dress along with her. And I don't imagine there are in-house dressmakers that can put a dress together in under an hour, which means they had that dress, which means that's the dress of a dead woman. No Ewok could fit in that dress, so that's the dress of the last humans who were on the forest moon of Endor. Maybe it's just a leftover dress from someone who died naturally, or maybe it's the dress they put on all of the people they're about to sacrifice. We don't know. But it's clear that I think it's the second thing. I assume that's a leftover dress from a human they previously sacrificed. They also, and this isn't a point, but they seem like there's something really off about their bodies. Like my friend and I were talking about this and she said that she thought if you held one, you would feel like something was wrong and different on the inside. It's like if you see, like there's a lifelike animatronic dog and it totally looks like a real dog, but then you held it, you could feel the robot parts inside instead of bones. And you'd be like, that's not right. This isn't something that is right, right? Like the inside is some kind of weird perversion of what should be. And it brings me to my, okay. Join us next time when our topic will be, script says a Greek gangster comes up behind me and, and stabs me. Uh, and then we just like cut like abruptly, like so the audience doesn't know if I come back, like a, like as a, a cliffhanger. So they have to come back next time to see if I if I lived. Did we not? Did we ever do that? Did we get a? Did we have a Greek gang? Sounds like producers didn't reach out. We don't have it. Okay. Um, bye. <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, like and subscribe if you want. Uh, and in the comments, tell me what you think it, it feels like on the inside of an Ewok. I think it's like when you go to Disneyland and you see Goofy, this is what my friend said, and it's like big Goofy and you're a child, and you're like, oh my God, I wanna give Goofy a hug. And then you feel the inside that there's something else in there because Goofy's not real. And it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a really haunting uh, sensation when it's like, this is not, what Goofy's bones should be. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs>